Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt from the Ganation Counseling Service here today to present the new moon of July 9th, 2021. So just a little review, new moons are in some ways even more predictive than the full moons. Full moons are more about the reflective period that occurs after new moons, which would be new beginnings and the time when we can or do, whether we are aware of it or not, often begin new things. So you want to look for a new moon for that rather than a full moon. So before I begin, as always, I want to thank you for watching the video. And I want to thank all of my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, I really invite you to subscribe. But also, if you would, like, share, comment. I'd love to hear from you. So before I begin uh, looking at this chart, I want to, as always, discuss uh, where it comes from. So we're actually setting the chart, as always, for Washington, D.C. The first part of looking at the chart, I'll keep it in D.C., but I will meander, good word, into what I would call the Aries point and ultimately the sun moon axis, which would affect us all regardless of where you live. So just kind of looking at it from any perspective. And most of all, as always, looking at this chart as we do all charts with a real emphasis on the transmetunians and in particular, the asteroids. So we can see what details they add to this chart. So if you would, let's stick around and look at what this chart has to offer us as we proceed through the month of July 2021. I'm back. You can always tell by the extra menu. I'm a little slow on the transitions today. I apologize. Um, it's a little hard to use both my arms. I have an issue with my right shoulder. And of course, it's happening today. So I wanted to look at this chart and a couple of really obvious things stand out. And remember that this chart is really Washington, D.C. The um, ascendant and descendant, as well as the midheaven and the IC, will change depending upon where you live in the world. So this chart is mostly for the DC area, for those of us, a lot of us that live on the East Coast, uh, this chart would be in play. But as always, I wanna open it up beyond Washington DC and look at it from the perspective of what we can learn as people, okay? But, <clears throat> You can't overlook what happens in the DC chart, nor the important, the important points that DC has or the effect that it has in the overall world. So the uh, chart is featuring a, as you can see, there we go, a Pluto on the ascendant. Now they are, it is retrograde and Saturn on the ascendant, retrograde. Now, interestingly enough, it's just, Saturn is just leaving that place, but there's still some effect here. Pluto is on it, but it's out of sign. It's been intercepted, so to speak, because it's still in Capricorn, which is ruled by the, which is the 12th house, and the uh, ascendant is in Aquarius but they really are only about six degrees apart. So it makes it a conjunction. Pluto is transformation. And one of the things I wrote about was, yeah, it is in retrograde. So it might not be as obvious as the proverbial rug being pulled out from under you, but you know, Pluto is still that, this stuff that manipulations and power struggles are made from. And let's be honest, when it comes to manipulation and power struggles, very often, we don't always see that coming. Or more often than not, 
that's done in an underhanded manner. And so the retrograde, to me, uh, doesn't really diminish the power of Pluto. It only makes Pluto maybe a little bit less obvious. So here we have transformations, and here we have Saturn, which is structures. Now, Saturn is also retrograde, and in some ways, when it's retrograde, it is a little bit more internal than external, meaning that it's time for us as people to get organized, to grow up, to be more mature, and to take on responsibility. And that's what Saturn really means on the Ascendant, is it is about picking up responsibility. It is about taking responsibility. And Saturn is, um, as we know, and you know, we don't even have to, uh, it, let's just point out this, Saturn, <laughs> which we already know is squaring, which is by the way, also in that axis, Uranus. Now Uranus is down here at the IC. So Uranus in the third house could indicate, again, it's direct, changes of thinking, uh, you know, our thinking is changing. Maybe through what we've learned. Maybe we're thinking more about the future. But things are changing. Friends can be unpredictable, particularly close friends. Families. Families. Because it's so close to the IC. So in some cases, people will be moving. Or they're living on the road temporarily. Now that we can do certain things like that. So it's interesting because that's Uranus. So we still have that anxiety, but the anxiety might be picked up a little bit by the fact that Saturn in the first is an aspect to that ascendant, which means an increase in responsibilities could be leading to more anxiety about the future. Okay, or the future of friendships. The um, other factors on Saturn, Saturn is a big player in this chart. So I don't even have to worry about asteroids at this point. It's a big player with the planet. So you have Saturn in an opposition, by the way, to Volcanus, which means pressure, pressure could be coming from other people. Um, the sun and moon are falling in the sixth house, but they do not aspect the descendant. However, with the sun and the moon in the sixth house, there is something going on with regard to day-to-day -day activities, our work, our routines. I think that people are wanting to uh, look at their routines, their daily routines, and they may want to make adjustments accordingly. And that's a new beginning. Well, they're looking for new beginnings with the day-to-day -day reality because of that. Now, this is the DC chart. I would look at this combination, this 18 degrees one minute of cancer. I would look at it in your birth charts. I would look at it in the new moon chart where you live, and I would compare the two because it will tell you a lot about what this means to you. Now, as we move into um, just, again, looking at the sun and moon in Cancer are in opposition to that Pluto. And again, getting the idea that transformation is happening and transformation in the DC chart does look to be not only the schedule that people have every day, how they're eating, and maybe even who their friends are, but it is an opposition which means that there's a lot of things going on still. You know, it's interesting people talk about, let's go back to normal, we're going back to normal. And I've said this before, life is not a circle, it's a spiral. So you can't go back to normal. You can't undo a whole year of virus and everything that we've learned as a result of it. So this reminds us that we, on a day-to-day -day reality, will have some transitions to implement 
within our own life and our own relationships because sun and moon together does well the midpoint of them even is which would be the same which is about our relationships saturn is also making an opposition to mars and to venus which means our responsibilities might be keeping us from loved ones, especially people have to go back to work and they're used to being at home. Uh, and also, it, it's it, Saturn means also, you know, with Mars, Mars and Saturn together, well, there's a certain form of astrology, magic astrology would be a heartbreak clash, okay, of sorts, because Mars and Saturn or even uh, Saturn and Venus, the good part of it, we probably have more discipline to watch money and our spending. We also have more discipline with our actions. But Venus, Mars together could be selfish actions that are causing heartbreaks, issues, problems. So we can look at that any way that really comes into play. The other thing that I wanted to point out, because that's really important. These are closer planets. These really affect us. And Saturn seems to really be playing with them. Now, they are not on the angle. And I am going to say that the Mars-Saturn is weakened because it is six degrees away. So it's not as strong as it could be, but we're still going to feel it. And Mars-Saturn is like somebody losing their temper and then breaking off relationships. In other words, it's not really being able to get past bad tempers or bad behavior or a lack of discipline. So Mars, your actions are directly butting up against the structures, even though those structures are in retrograde. Okay? Now, you know, People are worried and have been worried, especially since the 4th of July, though I don't believe there's been, I think anything that's been going on has been squashed. A little example might be that they tried to do a white nationalist run or walk, I should say, a parade of sorts in Philadelphia and they got run out of town. I don't know why they would even go to Philly, but, you know, having spent a lot of time in Philly, I could have told them that. But it's just interesting that um, that to me is Mars Saturn you know you go up against a system you're going to cause anger I think there's no other way to put it okay and Venus Mars does tend to be more self gratifying so you're doing self gratifying things it may buck up against the system so it's a little bit of a warning for us as well so we could get with that now I want to also look as we come down here, we've got Vulcan, which I have discussed briefly in another video. But more importantly, we have Kronos and Hades. But you remember what we said about Vulcan? That Vulcan is very combustible, okay? This right here, to me, That's interesting. Now they're they're still about two degrees, two and a half degrees apart. Okay, so there's a little bit of a weakening of it, but it makes me wonder what's happening with authority figures. And think of your bosses at work. For those of you who have bosses, okay, or authority figures, this this lineup or stellium, if you will, but particularly this, and then throw Hades to it. You know, one of the interesting things that I want to talk about is that people in positions of authority often make a lot of mistakes. That's how they get caught. And Vulcan is highlighting particularly those mistakes that are made by people in positions of authority and how that affects us on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to be political, but I am going to state an obvious here, just so that we have an example of what I'm talking about. We're finding out more and more about how our previous president handled this virus. 
not well, obviously. And what's interesting is Vulcan is falling right with what would be the virus, also the news, the information, because it's past, and details about how it was handled. And it's not voting well for him. Well, there are many that say that that's why he lost the election. I can think of many other reasons why he may have lost this election, but I'll go with that because he didn't handle that very well either. But the Kronos Hades with Vulcan, very interesting lineup. And I would look toward bosses and supervisors at work because I believe there's some information here for everybody because it doesn't matter where you live. Hades is still going to be at 10 degrees. Vulcan's still going to be at 11 degrees. Kronos is still going to be at 13 degrees. And I just thought it was so interesting that somewhere in that midpoint is Vulcan. It also means past authorities. So if you're thinking about a situation where perhaps you have a new boss or you're changing bosses, it could be related to the past boss. If you're going into a new job situation, you might be faced with something that was occurring in the past. And that wouldn't matter where you live. Okay? So I just, I really wanted to point that out. I thought it was really, really, really interesting. I also want to point out that the Black Moon Lilith very close to the ascendant. By the way, Adamitas, though it's an out of sign, is still an aspect to that IC, and that's telling us that we're still stuck. And I think that we are. I think there's a real imbalance going on right now that with people either being vaccinated or not being vaccinated, knowing what to do, not knowing what to do. Um, most of us around here are all Pfizer, which means we still have to be careful of the Delta variant, though, you know, it, it's, we're all, we're in, I'm in an area that's about 75, 76% vaccinated. So <clears throat> the greater Northeast is really vaccinated well, but people travel and that's a real big concern. So. Adamitas is talking about being firm. It's also talking about being stuck. And the interesting thing is remember what the black moon means. So look at Vulcan. Look at the black moon. And you know, Lilith, I want to refer to Lilith because you guys get away from this black white thing. It's just so ridiculous that, you know, let's homogenize things a little bit. Let's look at this as Lilith, okay, and Vulcan. So Vulcan and Lilith both have their own videos. Go ahead and check it out. Black Moon keeps us here. We're stuck. We're stuck with what we're used to. We are stuck. That's Washington, D.C. to the max. And politically, they're trying to hold on to the past. So, well, not everybody. The GOP is. And, and boy, when I say they want to go back to the past, with all of my study in history, apparently the past is something like 1920. So it's, and people are being firm. And what's really good is that I think people are being firm all the way around, though the people who are holding so tightly to the past may be the ones that are causing more pain or issue, if you will. And the rest of us are just remaining firm in what it is that we believe in. Okay. I certainly don't want to hold on to the past. I am and always will be a female. <laughs> okay. There's nothing in the past for me or any other female. Just bear that in mind. Um, you know? So, and notice too what's going on in Afghanistan. Let's talk about how women are being forced to reckon with the past. And those poor girls... Many of them don't even know what that's like because they're too young. So, again, what binds us to the past? Why are we stuck there? It wasn't that great, people. Of course, if you're young and you're looking at this, you would probably totally agree with me. If you're a historian and you're looking at this, you'll probably agree with me. So we have that going on. 
So in this lineup of the IC, and notice that the midheaven, the only thing that's up there is, I'm having trouble with my arm here, there it is, is Poseidon, okay? And Poseidon is retrograde. Kind of tells us we're going to learn some things. We're going to learn some things. Oh, I think we're learning things every day. And uh, what we're learning about really is resting on what they're trying to do by holding us to the past and what has happened in the past via that precedent. Okay, so I want to grab my pen here. It just takes me longer to do everything with this arm. Okay, so I wanted to get the pen because you know me, I'm a visual. Well, I'm not visual, that's what's interesting, but I've been a teacher a long time and teaching in all styles is very important. Now, some things that I just wanted to reiterate. First of all, Poseidon is the only thing that shows up for the Midheaven. And it does talk about news and it is retrograde. Okay, so things are coming out in the news. Now, it has um, an opposition to Uranus. It's, I know that it's not marked because they don't do that with, that's why I bring a pen out. So Poseidon is in opposition. And here we go again with, we're hearing news that's related to our need to change and to change particularly our thinking. Okay. And I, I really believe that, that this is showing some of the difficulty that some people are having with the news that they're hearing, okay? And, and, and when it's in the ninth, okay, which is politics and, and people playing politics, and then you have Uranus, I think no matter how much these people resist, and they can resist right now if they want, you can't stop progress. You just can't. But you can try. I know they're trying all over Europe. They're trying all over the world. China's trying in Hong Kong. But I can tell you that before 2030, a lot of these things will be like pimples that will rise to a head and burst. Because we're in a period of chronos and hades. And one of the things we're looking at is leadership. Leadership of the past and bad leader. Okay? Because that's hades bad leadership. So we're looking at these things and how not to repeat them. But we're having a real struggle right here. Realize too that Poseidon is learning something that can set us free. Okay? Because Uranus is about freedom. And one of the things that's going on in Washington right now is a curtailing of our freedom. At least the GOP is trying. I think about the voter rights thing. And I think about how they're going back on abortions. And, you know, you know, when the horse is out of the barn, it's almost impossible to put the horse back in the barn with, because you're now stepping on people, other people's freedoms and their rights. And, um, and that is going on. I don't think it's going to work well, though. I'm going to be honest with you. And I think that when you see this, and you see that this is right now an aspect to that, believe it or not, because they both fall in an angle, in D.C., keep going, guys, because it's all going to fly back in your face. And I, again, I don't wish bad or ill. I don't want to upset apple cars. But you can't, you can't try to hold back change. You can't manipulate and power struggle. Pluto, you can try, but Pluto ha is not something that we get to control. It's really something that controls us. And that's the key here. We can control a lot with Uranus, but, but all that happens when we try to take control, and remember this selfishness up here in square, by the way, there is a, when you look at this on a chart, there's real activity here. 
when you do this selfishness, you're bumping up against ideal and freedom, idealism and freedom. And in the middle of a transformation, it should be interesting. You know, as people, we are changing. That's why I say that we're going back to normal. There will be no normal. <laughs> First of all, what is normal? I don't get that. We're going back to normal. What's normal? Okay. Because every restaurant business now has probably a really good takeout business. We're not going to give that up. I mean, that's just one very poor example, but that's just one example of freedom through transformation. It wasn't easy. So you can't go backwards and you can't, Everybody who's doing propaganda right now should be ashamed of themselves. And I know we have a lot of, here we go again, right wing media doing just that. And unfortunately, it's being called out for what it is, propaganda. So I think that this chart is really pointing to some new beginnings that deal with the transformation that we're going through, the freedom that we're going through, and how to use our own self-imposed energies or desires. How do we do that? Okay. Um, you know, and how does it affect other people? Are we able to be organized enough? Are we able to be uh, structured enough? Are we able to be disciplined enough? Because the universe is asking us with this and this and this, particularly this, to grow up, to grow up, to accept our responsibilities, even when those responsibilities involve transformation. It's a pretty exciting time to be alive. It's pretty crazy too, okay? Uh, just one more example of pointing this out. We are still dealing with the collapse of a building, something that people think can't happen in the United States. Well, have you seen climate change? Do you understand about sinkholes? <laughs> okay. How is it that a building couldn't fall down here? It sure as heck could, because we haven't been worried about our land or where we're putting these buildings or what we're doing to the land on top. And then Mother Nature comes back and bites your butt. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, all the same stuff. But one of the things that's also coming out is this lineup that I was referring to, that perhaps people didn't do what they were supposed to do. The authorities and they didn't take care of the damage, the destruction, and the disintegration, all hate, which is combust with all in there. Okay. So I want you, as I said before, I'm going to go over to solar fire in a moment, but I wanted everyone to look at the chart for DC just because, you know, all of these things are occurring. And by the way, Florida is on the East Coast and is somewhat affected by this chart as well, <laughs> okay? So I think that um, what, what I really wanted you to see were the examples I was able to set and then apply these, this stellium, if you will, this stellium here, it's four, five planets, to our trans-Neptunians, to what's going on in your life. Apply this real close connection to being stuck or are you sticking yourself? Are you being firm because you can't let go of something? I definitely think with the part of fortune, or some people refer to this as part of spirit there, that particularly through the environment of DC, we are being brought everything we need to understand this. So let's go to uh, solar fire and let's look at this even from a wider perspective. I need to know what's going on. So the chart that we're looking at now, very full, has the asteroids in. I actually have an asteroid list to work with. I've been working with for, 
I actually do a lot of work in the new moon. I actually write an article based in sun signs for the website. And so I have like, and then when I do the card readings, I refer back to that list. So I have a, a very worn list that we'll be working with. Now, a couple of things here that I want to point out. Here's an asteroid called Asteria, okay? And it's right here. And I'll, I'll, I'll get a pen, so maybe it'll help. Okay, so the pen right here at 27 degrees is Asteria. Now, Asteria is conjunct Hebe, which is service people. Um, it's also getting or having service, but it's also that enabling. Okay, here par fortune, sometimes referred to as par spirit, at one degree. Now, I, I kind of wanted to talk about these because we haven't. And one of the things I want to talk about is Asteria is actually, the, and they're retrograde. It may be actually people literally praying for help. Okay, and I think when it comes to DC, and a lot of the issues that we have with the economy, um, there are a lot of people praying for help. So that's, that was pretty good. I thought that was pretty good. Um, the other things I wanted to look at, I've talked about this combination before in the, uh, um, in the video entitled Vulcan. I talked about Psyche and Ophelia and how it's childhood wounding and the overreaction is a result of that. It's like um, expectations versus limits. And I've, I've talked about all of this. So you can go back in and look. They are on the descendant. And one of the things that people have to realize, especially if you're an enabler <laughs> or in an enabling situation, that people are dealing with old issues. And you know what's really interesting about something like the virus and, and us being locked up for a year, more than a year, you have time. Okay. So one of the things that's happening is, is that people are running into this with other people. And that's why I say dealing with the general public right now can be very difficult because I don't think that people are behaving well at all. We try, we did have a Venus uh, and in a really important place in the, I believe it was the full moon chart, but I also want to point out that Venus in this chart is in the position of the Aries point. In other words, it's right there. It's only 34 minutes outside of, so it's really in there. And that it behooves us to try to be nice. That the world in general is suffering. People are suffering. Even with the world getting back in out there, there's this, there's this sense of suffering um, that, uh, that's going on um, that is pretty tough for people. The other and the newer two I want to talk about today because they are uh, in this chart and because they are so close together. And I like talking about them when they're really close together like I have been with Ophelia and and psyche, even though, you know, it may change from chart to chart, they might not always be on the angle. In the case of this Leo at 11 degrees, we have that people have dependencies, that's what this is, your dice, on partners. And it is in this ascendant, descendant, because it's only 10 degrees away. Remember, anything to 10 degrees. Well, let's check it out. First of all, we have Saturn, which means that people have to be more limiting, more restrictive, okay, of their dependency. You know, as they get restricted, they depend more on their partners. And this is talking about how partners have to be careful of enabling because all of this falls on the ascendant descendant line. Now, would this be in effect if it wasn't in this chart? No. However, yes. Because no matter what chart you're looking at, Hera, which is this little thing with the ball in the bottom, and your dice, 
are in conjunct, only minutes apart, and they are in opposition, by minutes again, to Saturn. So you have to ask yourself about that. Okay? So that's a, a something to look out for as we go about our daily routines and deal with our people. I'm going to put it on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay? Also, these two are not far away from Venus, which often points to significant others, people we're in relationships with. And we need to look at that because I don't think, I think people depending on one another is not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. But I think that sometimes uh, in couples over years, things sometimes become uneven. And you really want to look at that. And, and you don't want to enable people because that's keeping them from their own lessons. Okay. So I wanted to go through that, these two little puppies. So we did that. So let's now go and, because I'm going on and on as usual, and look at the final part of what I want to look at, which is the dial. And here I want to look at both the sun, I'm going to find it, uh, sun, moon, at right here. At 18.01, I hit it right on. And you can see that... Um, it hits, well, it talks about vehicles, and it talks about how things that we thought maybe would, maybe you thought the vehicle would be good, isn't. Maybe you thought that you could use this or that as a vehicle to get to the next, and you can't. I do believe that we are solving problems. I really do. I believe that that is a huge part of what's going on. But it also is that as we solve problems, certain other things will fall apart. And that may take us by surprise because Pythia, though it can be kind of a psychic right here, because it's hard to see these asteroids, Pyth um, Pythia does not end the way you expect it to. Okay, that's really, really important. In this axis, okay, so um, Pythia melopine. It's almost as though unexpectedly things get worse. It's, it's like you're solving problems, but other things are getting worse. And it's so unexpected because you didn't expect that. And that's everybody. This is the sun, moon axis. Okay. Now, if I take this, it's kind of hard. I keep going back and forth. And I move this okay, to there we go. I'm a little past it. It's really about 01. So let me go by the minute. Now we can go exact. But you can see that it is a sun and moon. But look what's here with it as a midpoint. First of all, you've Adamitas. We're stuck. Did I not talk about Adamitas? I said we are stuck. One of the worst things that I see going on with this virus, and first of all, it was predicted. There's we should have Everybody should have known it was coming. I knew it was coming. All the astrologers I work with knew it was coming. It was predicted. Nostradamus told us about it almost 500 years ago, 400 years at least. So we always knew this was coming. But it's really interesting because it's talking about two things. It's talking about the transformation that's a result of it and how we're stuck because of it. It's also talking about expansions within families. And one of the things I just heard an article about is multi-generational living spaces. Because people are going to be living together more again. And, and that's actually not a bad thing. They did it before in the past and got away from it. So that's, that is, let me go to, I keep saying I'm going to go there and I have it. It's 01. There it is. So you can see how that has, and people are concerned about the health and well-being of their partners. See how that played out? So you can see the themes played out over and over and over again, and that's how I read as an astrologer. So giving you a little tip to how I read. The, um, so the sun and the moon are all together with panacea. We are solving problems during this time. This is the beginning of solving problems. So we really are going to do what we need to do to solve problems. It's wonderful, really. 
It really is. The um, other side of this is right here. Okay. Because, yeah, we have 1801. So say 18, you go back 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I didn't take it. There it is. 22. There it is. So you're going back. And here you have people going on vacation, withdrawal, but it's also about restructuring. It's also about, and that's what you do when you go away. But look at all the Adamitas again. We're stuck, people. We're trying to do too much at once. It's time to withdraw so that we can reconstruct in a, in a, in a stronger and better way. And a lot of the problems related to goals and work they're not going to be easily resolved, okay? They really are not. So we just have to focus on them more. So with that said, I'm going to take a few moments. That was our sun axis um, with Adamitas in it, which I have already talked about, but I think it's really important. Here's something else I really, and I've done this. Again, I work with this chart a lot, the new moon. By the time I do this particular video, I've had it work with it at least three times. But look at this. This asteroid down here, and I'm going to grab my pen. This asteroid down here is talking about how people do not listen. Wow. It's amazing. You're going to say to yourself over and over and over again, I just don't think people are listening. The other thing is with all the troubles in relationships right now, Uranus, Venus is suddenly falling in love. So, you know, here again, if you're in a relationship that's not very good, don't go falling in love already before you've dealt with the old situation. Just a little bit of advice there. But anyway, um, when we're, as I'm going to go through, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to go around the circle as I always do. So, um, it's as I go through the astrology, it is telling us, and this would be down here as I'm going to move down to the 2230, which is approximately right here. Okay. So we don't see anything just because I, believe me, there's stuff there. This particular asteroid refers to the need to be structured, that there has to be a structure set up in order to move. And, you know, Saturn is asking you the same thing. The, to be organized is the best way to look at this. It's also telling us that it's we're going to be put into humiliating and even uh, situations where we can be self-destructive. We have to be very careful. And risk is also involved in here. Yep, here I am already. And it's like we're taking risks that maybe we shouldn't be taking. So I think people need to be wiser. We are still in a pandemic. Even though I live in a herd immunity area, and I do because believe me when I tell you, we have social events, everyone's vaccinated. So we, I do, I'm very fortunate, but it doesn't mean that outside of that group or outside of this area, we should not be very, very diligent. We should. So as we move on, we see that there are some necessary evils in life. That, that one of the things we're dealing with as we go back to life is the necessary evils that are also a part of that life. And that's back up here. Okay? That's up here. That's pain. Then we move to being conscious and aware. And that fell with the idea of structure. And so the idea is, is that if you're more aware, if you're more conscious, that's what structure will help you with. Structure will help you tune in. It will make you more aware. And that's a really good thing. The, um, the next one is two, really. It talks about how finances and relationships will cause confusion and dizziness. Also, it means watch if people who have sugar issues, this is not the month to cheat because you will become dizzy from sugar. They're running together, these two. So you want to be very, very careful of that. 
right? Then we're moving to, oh, we don't have any there. That's right. We're running to how a lot of things that are happening right now are like two by fours on the back of head. We are learning, but some of us have to learn the hard way. So that's a little discerning. So as we move down, it does talk about how people have faulty perceptions. Boy, I can tell you that's true. Faulty perceptions is running down here. Remember when I said to you people not listening? People are not listening. They're not. I know there are people in other areas, fortunately, um, I'm trying to separate myself a little bit from those that are not vaccinated, okay? Um, simply because I am a Pfizer and that we're only 64% for the Delta variant, which is now raging. But I'll be really honest with you. I have to do it because I don't understand the perceptions of those people. And one of the things that Weasley is referring to is faulty perceptions, okay? Having faulty perceptions. And that is a world issue that is not limited to the United States. That's a world issue. So look around for some faulty perceptions. That's a real hot spot to have faulty perceptions sit, by the way. And then I move on to, well, the south node's coming. So uh, it's not in this chart, but it's going to pass over the Aries point. So there's going to be a couple days in there, probably within the next couple of weeks, that, or days actually, because it's the south node moves rather quickly. That may not feel all that great. Some people will not feel all that great. The, um, Cupido. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Yeah, we're pretty fine after that. You know, the other thing I do want to point out before I end this is that not only do people have faulty perceptions, but they're not actually remembering things right either. You know, it's really interesting. Um, let's talk about big lies. Okay. So we know the previous president lost the election. We know that. He lies about it. He's now trying to get other GOP members to go behind him. And now the next lie is about how there was no insurrection, but it was a tourist event. I don't know how far these people will go. But I want you to know that Mezzanine is in there. And you can take a risk with this one, but I'm going to be honest with you. Some of us do remember but it's funny how many people will not remember because it doesn't suit their, it just doesn't suit their uh, agenda. Now, if you're somebody, doesn't have to be politics, okay, who has to go back and is having arguments with somebody about how something happened, you really got to look at it because we're not all remembering things in the right way, okay? So realize that that mezzanine that's a part of everybody's life and that it's really, it might be important to be more structured, to be more organized and to look at our perceptions. And what is it that we do remember? Because our memory could be off. So watch how many risks you're taking because you may be off in your thinking. Just a little wisdom here. So let me come back. So I just want to say thank you for watching the video and, and uh, please again, subscribe, like, share. Really, I'm, I'm starting to get the word out. It's, I've got three different venues I work from and they're all starting to pick up and I'm really happy about that because I truly believe in astrology as a tool to help us and to help us evolve and to help us look at things that maybe are harder to look at, which is what the new moon sort of features a little bit. And, and in doing that, we can do so much good, not just for ourselves, but for our world. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So in the meantime, please be well. Take care of yourself. Watch how many risks you're taking. 
And as always, until we meet again, I wish you only happy readings.